Good morning and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. And we're so excited about what we're going to share with you. As you know, we have been in a series on our Days of Intercessory Prayer where we've been talking about the watchmen, today's watchmen of the church. We kicked off this particular series on June the 29th with Pastor Jesse McCoy. And I pray that what we shared during that time was food unto your soul and an enlightenment unto your path. But today... I have one of my spiritual sisters, you've heard me mention her name countless times on the air, and the ministry that God has given unto her. Today we have Prophetess Melissa Kelly of Purpose to Pray, so help me welcome this awesome woman of God, Prophetess Melissa. Say hello to us, Prophetess. Good morning, and hello everyone. Thank you for having me. You are most welcome, and, and I am so excited about what we're going to dive into today. Uh, I do know that um, as we've been studying and, and talking about uh, the watchmen, today's watchmen of the church, I was praying and, and asking who are we going to invite to discuss this with, and you fell into mine as well as a few others, because I know from working with you spiritually that you uh, have been called and you carry the mantle of a watchman. Now, when we're talking about the watchman, I know that in the individual homes, somebody needs to be a watchman. But we want to expand that even further. A watchman is one who positions themselves to listen, to see, to sense the tactics of the enemy, any movement, any instructions concerning that particular area from the Lord, because warning comes before destruction. Yeah. And, and what's been in my spirit lately is, where are the watchmen? What's going on? Too much is going on on the upon the earth. It's bothering my spirit, and I know it's the Holy Spirit. To say who who is hearing the alarm? Who is sounding and warning the people? Where are our watchmen? And so that's what we're going to talk about. That's what the series has been about. And the particular section we're going to dive into is when the watchman is watching for messengers as well as watching for the enemy. So tell me, prophetess, because I know your spirit has been heavy on several occasions of our conversations. What's going on? Well, you know, Pastor, and you're right. My spirit has been heavy, and I've talked to on several occasions about what I've been sensing in the spirit. Well, I know for a fact that the watchmen are plenty in number, but they are few in action. And what I mean by that is there are many people with the mantle of a messenger, but so few of them are actually operating, uh, functioning in that uh, assignment. And there are many reasons for that. Um, the, the world is a distraction right now, and you have so many people that are distracted with what's going on in the world, what's going on in their own lives, what's going on in the church, and that distraction is sometimes hindered. You have some who um, operate in the church, but don't have the authority to release what they see. Either they've been shut down, um, they've been ignored when they try to sound the alarm. And so, in those sense, people tend to just say, well, okay, they didn't receive what I had to say, so I'm just going to step back. But you have those. And then you have those that are so inundated with the trials of life right now, uh, with COVID. So many people are being sick, losing family members, losing loved ones. And so their distractions have caused them to, um, to, to move off hope, um, to move out of position. And then you have those that are watching, do see, but just don't know what they're seeing. They don't know what to do with what they see. They don't understand what they see. 
Amen. Listen, you said quite a bit in there. <laughs> quite a bit. Not being accepted, so they're going through a rejection. Not knowing what they see, or not even knowing what to do with what they see. Now, I think that's so important. Getting to the part of knowing what to do with what you see. Because some things that we are seeing, that, that we are shown, we're supposed to pray about it. Right. And then there are some times when the individual, it could be an individual or corporately, they just won't heed the warning. And then that's when God will dispatch a vessel to go to them when they don't heed it. When the, listen, you've gotten the warning, you've gotten the instructions, you just won't heed to it. Yeah. And God is yet pleading with his church. We are the church. He's yet pleading with us. And like you, like you said, uh, getting um, just the the facets of life when the watchman isn't even showing up for their assignment. So, how do and, and I know we intercede, and I know that there are times that I pray for the watchman and, and I know that the term watchman is, is from the Old Testament and if you're, you know, someone might say, well, that was Old Testament. No, it's the intercessor. It's the same thing. Um, that we begin to pray for those who have that mantle. I know that that's a burden that the Lord has placed upon me that I pray for the watchman, that they show up for their assignments, that, um, that they hear and that they see that that desire returns that they hear and see that they sound the trumpet that they give the warning without taking on the attitude of i got too much going on in my life that's their business because that is a reality yeah absolutely so absolutely. so let's dive into this book and and i've shared it before here on the air i came across this awesome awesome uh, tool you know I'm always saying what do you have in your arsenal and I'm looking at the book praying for the impossible it's by Dutch sheets and so uh, to our listening audience if you are a reader if you carry this mantle and you want to learn more about it and that's another vital tool learn about your mantle I encourage you to Get yourself a copy of this book for your personal library. Today we're going to take a look at Watching for Messengers. I enjoyed this section, and I'm not going to let everybody know why. But my spiritual sister knows why I enjoyed this section. <laughs> it says, they watch for messengers to inform the gatekeepers about when to open the gates and when not to. Now, we know when a word comes, right? But we must know who sent the word. Amen. Is a word coming from our Father which is in heaven? Or has the enemy disguised itself to send a word that is contrary to the will of God to get us off focus. Yeah. So because I know that this is one of your areas. So we all have areas of a messenger, of, of a watchman, I mean. We all have specific tasks as a watchman. It's more than just hearing and seeing to sound the alarm. You're listening and you're seeing for something specific. My sister, Prophetess Melissa Kelly, is one who watches for the messenger. So I want you to take us into this area. 
take us into this. How do you watch to discern that messenger? Thank you. Well, most of all, uh, how do you watch? And then watch it not only with your eyes, but watch it as you said, discerning, um, sensing. Um, Holy Spirit will definitely let you know uh, when something is not right with a person. And I always trust my instincts. And I always trust Holy Spirit when I feel this um Something is what I call it because there have been times where I know right off what it is about this person, but there also has been times when this person came in the appearance of being anointed, powerful, and and hey, signs and wonders have followed some that I've learned about. So that type of person, you kind of have to allow Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. Well, God, what is it? Because what I'm seeing, this person is signs and wonders and following this person. And what I'm sensing is totally different. So that's when I go into prayer. And I allow Holy Spirit to take me into a place of just Him ministering to me what I'm sensing. So sometimes it could be uh, evil intent. Sometimes it could be one that is uh, sent to uh, take over. Um, um, to to turn your people away from you. Uh, so many different things that it could be. Mm-hmm. But I just want to give an experience of what I've had uh, with one um, particular man of God that came to the church I three weeks was at. And everyone was up in an uproar about this man of God. He preached the house down. Someone knew it appeared to be. Mm-hmm. And then he was laying hands and people were being slain in the spirit. This man... Uh, was sent from hell. He had evil intent. He was a liar. He was a robber. Um, he, 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 he was um, he was false. He was literally a wolf in his clothing. Jesus. And so when I went to the pastor and to um, to tell them what I had sent in this man, um, they were reluctant because of what they had experienced in the power that he carried. So they heard me, but they weren't listening. Mm -hmm. And so in a case like that, um, all I could do, I would grieve. Because I didn't want to feel like I'm Debbie Downer. Well, you know, I'm against everybody that comes in. Nobody come in, she always sees something. So it kind of caused me in my early stages of of, of walking um, in this mantle, it kind of caused me to just like fold. And then adapt. Mm-hmm. Okay? I began to adapt to what everybody else was doing. Well, later on, not long, I continued to pray. But later on, this guy, uh, boyfriend, hear me now. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Yes, came and exposed uh, his, um, his, his, his lover. He exposed him. He, he let him know that this person um, had HIV, and he had already proposed to one of the women in our church. Oh, Jesus. So this was stood a wolf in sheep clothing. And when I tell you that, I took no joy when the truth finally came out, but I was relieved. But uh, messengers sometimes catch it hard, because when they go to their leaders, and if you are a messenger from Watchmen, and you have gone to your leader and was literally ignored or shut down, mm-hmm. don't give up on what God has shown you. Because you have to believe the anointing that's on your life and what God has shown you. You have to believe it, even though it doesn't look like what you see, what you said. It doesn't look like it. You still have to believe what the Holy Spirit has shown you because you have to know, well, this is who I am. And if God said it, then there's something not right with it, and I'm going to stand on that. So even if you're rejected, even if you're shunned, you still have to pray. Pray that the, uh, that the Father opens the pastor's eyes. Pray that the Father opens some of the prophet's eyes, some of the people of the church. Pray um, that God reveals what you're sensing. Amen, amen. That That is so good. And, and as you were 
talking, I could literally visualize someone someone being sent to persuade the people to go another way. And as you were talking about and sharing about laying hands and people being slain, the first thing that came to my spirit that popped in my spirit was um, under what power? Come on. Oh my God. Under what power? Under what demonic stronghold are 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 they now cast under? Yeah. Oh God. Wow. And and so a, a lot of times you are correct. Um and and this this portion of the book it talks about that how it could be seen as they are like you said they always seeing something they always hearing something right they always dreaming they always talking about they had a dream and 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 sometimes you you don't want to share those warnings and those dreams because it's like oh here they come again what they got to say now nah. They don't agree with nothing, and it kind of puts um, the watchmen as if they are against what wants to be done in the local assembly, when in fact, it's to keep you in line in the right way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So the watchman is always under rejection. The watchman is always going to be under rejection because we want to do stuff our way. And it is contrary to the flesh. You just said something right there. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and take it. Well, I want to add to what, what you, I mean, you just said a whole lot. And I mean, and it, this is really good because it is, for those that are listening, that have experienced this, it's, it, it, it is so important to understand even those who are rejected. See, this is when you have to grow up in God. Mm -hmm. This is when you have to be, become spiritually mature. Because there will be times of rejection and, and, and discouragement. You know, no one is, is supporting the, 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 the call that's on your life. No one is supporting it. But you still are who God says you are. And in that sense, when when you when you are are being rejected, when you are being um, shunned or shut down, you have to know that you know, and you have to continue to move forward. Now you can't um, just drag someone into and just make someone see and just make someone believe. You can't become annoyed. You can't do that. You have to release what God has shown you, and you have to be okay with it, whichever way it goes, and pray about it because. You have an, a call to do what God told you to do. And it's up to the leaders if whether they receive it or not. It's up to whoever you want. They don't have to be a leader. Because watchmen are not only for the church. Right. They have watchmen that uh, warn their friends, their loved ones, um, warn people on their job. So it, it's not just your 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 intermediate or your, your, your circle. It can be anyone. But you have to be okay with how they accept it. The, the warning will have gone out. I really wanted to, to really, really touch that because I know how it makes me feel. And so I even began to, in my early young years, I, I began to question, you know, God, is, what is this? I mean, why are you showing me this? I also listen to this, um, Pastor. Mm -hmm. When someone new would come to the church, I would literally block discernment. Mm. I would literally look the other way, don't even fellowship or shake their hands and look them in their eyes because I didn't want to see anything. Right. I didn't want to see anything that I would have to report and be, you know, whether received or not. I just, it was just too much. It was coming too much. And I'm saying, is everybody wrong? Is something wrong with everyone? And so I would literally um, just block what I would, what I do what we were trying to do. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even receive it. I wouldn't block it. So I had to repent for that. Mm -hmm. 
Because I'm being disobedient. I'm walking in rebellion. I'm being disobedient. So I had to repent and learn to grow up. Grow up. Stand firm. Look them in the eye. Shake their hand. And a lot of Holy Spirit will show you whatever he wants to show you. And if it's something to just pray about, then pray about it. If it's something to sound the alarm, then sound the alarm. You know, here's something that happens when we do that. When we try to not <laughs> walk in that. The overseers, the leaders, the pastors of the house, they know who the watchmen are. Now, it, and it happens in a give or take. When we give the warnings, it's rejected. But... I know you see something. And so we are called into the offices to say, tell me what you think about this. <laughs> Why? Because you know I've seen it. Yeah. You know the Holy Spirit has revealed something. And so the watchman is really in a catch-2020 position, but that watchman has to be that iron pillar. That Absolutely. face of flint that I am on assignment, I, I carry a mantle, and not everyone carries this mantle. And, and, and early for me, I want not really early, but I want to say growing under spiritual maturity, I had to learn this very important thing, because I would say, why you let me see that? Why you let me hear that? Well, that becomes my assignment. Everybody ain't see it. Everybody ain't smell it. Everybody ain't hear it. It becomes my assignment to pray for. Yeah. And and I had to learn that. But I would I'm thinking, well, I know y'all just seen that. I know y'all listen, I know y'all just smell that. And when I say by smell, it's just like uh, there is a sweet aroma of the Holy Spirit. There is a stench of sin. Foul. Very foul. And and just being in, in services and someone being slayed in the spirit. And when you get up, you I've actually seen the shadow of that demonic spirit still laying there. And I'm looking around like saying... I know y'all see that big stain on the floor. I'm not. Le I've learned not to say that to people. All depends on who I'm around, who I'm, who I'm walking with. But normally, I, I would just look around and like saying to myself, "I know y'all see that." When I've learned, no, they didn't. Right. Because it's those who he has allowed. He has called he he has allowed them to see and to hear a watchman is set they are set and so um when i first would mention it to you know certain things you know people looking at me like i'm plumb crazy at my mind like what is she talking about that you can literally hear them saying she is crazy she don't know you know so I've learned who I can talk to about things who I cannot talk to about what I see. And if you, and it's usually, it's more than likely it's going to be watchmen to watchmen to say, I know you just sold it. Right. We've done that many a time. Yes. Yes. Or even, listen, by the time there have been occasions by the time we both lift up our head and turn, we've already we already looking at each other. <laughs> yes. And, and and so those right there have been some very pivotal moments that you know your head jerk up and you go to look over and at the same time you, you know your fellow sister in Christ is looking at you as well. Listen, if you are just tuning in, you're tuning into the balance of life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson, and we have an awesome woman of God on the air with us today. Uh, prayer partner, my sister in Christ, uh, Prophetess Melissa Kelly of Purpose to Pray. And uh, I just want to give this quick um, announcement. 
Uh, if you are in the Tampa Bay area and you would like to support a well-worthy cause for the community, Bow Ministry, Beauty of a Woman Ministry, the founder is Evangelist Tanya Walker Singleton, is having a school supply collection drive. This drive began June the 21st, and it extends through July 26th. There are four drop-off locations where you can drop off school supplies as well as personal hygiene items. This information is on our personal Facebook page, Elder Angel Ferguson Ferguson, as well as the Facebook page for The Balance of Life. Also, the registration portal on her website has been opened, so you can pre-register to uh, pick up school supplies for your student. This is her way of giving back to the community. She says that, you know what, all children are like nieces and nephews to her. And so she's been doing this for 13 years. Visit bowministry.org and you can register. The official pickup date for school supplies is going to be August the 7th. And so we want to make sure that you are in tune that if you need school supplies or if you want to support this worthy cause, please support our sister in Christ. Amen. All right. So we're going to dive back into this. I'm in the book and we've already talked about this without even mentioning this section that I'm in. It says... Skilled watchmen could even sometimes even recognize the runners by their stride before seeing their faces. That spiritual stride. Mm -hmm. We have to, I like to say frisk in the spirit. And so there is something that the enemy just can't disguise. And I'm going to tell you what it is. They cannot disguise their relationship with God. They can put on a camouflage. But as you watch intently, the reality of that relationship is going to come forth. Listen, you, you can't... Um, you can pretend for so long and put up a facade of praise and worship, but you can also identify false praise and worship. You can also identify when someone really hasn't taken their time. They just talking. They just reading the word. There's no relationship to the word. You see what I'm getting at? And so you should be able to recognize the stride of the one coming with the message. Just like the woman of God said, she senses it. She, she, it. Listen, the Holy Spirit allows her to see it. There is no lapse in time that the, that, that the Holy Spirit won't reveal. We just have to catch up with what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. Amen. So I know for me, and I, I have stood next to some and, and listen, they're speaking in a heavenly language. They will have, let me say, let me correct that. They're speaking in a language. It ain't heavenly because not all tongue is coming from God. Okay. And I have heard in my spirit, witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And so guess what I'm now doing? I ain't going to shout it out. I go to praying in the, I, I, I go to praying with him because immediately the Holy Spirit reveals. Immediately. Yes, he reveals. And so listen, I'm now praying to shut down what you uttering. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Amen. Have you ever been in that place? Where you sitting back listening to all of the uproar that you're listening to the praise that's going forth. Have you ever been in that place? I, I have. That I just stand back and I listen. Absolutely. 
Um, and when I tell you, you can hear the, the, the chatter of the demonic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it's, you can hear the whispers, the evil. You can hear uh, the activity, the demonic activity whispering in the wind. Uh, you can hear it. And so in those cases, I would get up and walk to church. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and then walking to church, I'm walking and I'm praying. And I'm allowing the atmosphere to know I see you. I know you're here. I see what you're trying to do. And I shut it down under the authority of the blood. Right. Cancel it. And so definitely. And then you, you have those that are caught up in emotion. Mm-hmm. The music, the emotion of it. And and you can tell those that are caught up in the emotion of it. Because as soon as the dick dancing and shouting, and as soon as the music just stops on a guy, on a dime, they mm-hmm. stop on a dime. Yes. They stop on a dime. So you got those um, that are just being, they're, 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 uh, the, the, the atmosphere is using them. They're using them to, to be uh, disruptive, mm-hmm. uh, to, to, to be distracted, to bring about distraction. So instead of you trying to enter in and get into the presence of God, you're watching this one here who's being disruptive and getting all of, of the attention. And so the attention goes to the person rather than God. Mm-hmm. So here, here, here is a distraction. Um, so yeah, I have sat definitely in the midst of what appeared to be something great in the spirit. And then you'll look at me and somebody ought to give God some praise. Oh, don't just sit there on oh God or whatever, but you should be glad that I'm doing what I'm doing because right. I'm fighting for the service in the spirit. Understand that though, is that everybody that lifts their hands are not in the spirit. You're right. And those that don't have their hands lifted could be in the spirit, could be praying, could be interceding. So we can't go by uh, a person's body language to determine where they are in God or where they are in the spirit at that time. You gotta know, you gotta know the people, you gotta know the presence that's there. So absolutely, I've sat and heard those uh, noises. And it can be very, sometimes it can be like static in your ears. It can mm-hmm. be very disturbing. It can be very disturbing. And I get angry, Pastor Ferguson. Amen. So I'm, one of those, I'm, I'm one of those people that will fight with the spirit. I will go out. I had a dream one time before where um, I was in this at this church, in this wedding. I was at a wedding, and this, this demonic person came and sat at the front row and lifted up her, tr- her skirt mm-hmm. to try and tempt the, the, the groom. And I saw her and she saw me and then she just jumped up and took off running. And in the dream, I took off running behind her. So God let me know that I tore her and didn't take her. Listen, when I, <laughs> well, I, you know, we, we, uh, we, we share quite a bit. And when I have a dream that I'm literally like you just said, I have gone after, I have chased. I remember, and, and we shared this, and it's coming back to me. Um, I was like at, at a counter or something, getting something. And I recognized one person and the next person next to this lady I knew. She had a face of a witch. And she struck out. You remember I told you that? She struck out to hit me. Well, in the dream, I hit back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Listen, don't come over here. I hit back. You know, she didn't, she didn't hurt her. She didn't make contact with me. She swung out to hit me, but I made contact with her, you know, and, and so those dreams, I, 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 when you sit back and you think about that, but just really being in a service and you, the Holy Spirit has you standing in the way. And when I mean way, I mean in the spiritual way to, to, to see and to observe. Yeah. And, and, and like you said, you can hear the chatter, you, the, 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 the very movement and so if, if we were to pay attention to our our musicians 
who are not walking fully in Christ, listen, they are beating the enemy. They're, they're beating, they're drumming to the enemy's uh, sound to get the people. Let me tell you something about true worship. To get the people to gyrate, to move, and to shake. Come on. And like you said, when the music stopped, they stopped. So what beat are you really dancing to? And so we have to, the watchman has to watch every area. Do you over there playing the music? Mm -hmm. But what are you hearing in your ear to put, to, 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 to strike those chords? What are you doing? Yeah. It's almost like, like I said, laying your hands and you know that you aren't clean and that person is, is, is slain, but under what spirit? Yeah. It's just like the music. And so when you go home and you hear this beat in your spirit, oh God, where is that beat coming from? What is that beat saying to you? What will you find yourself doing? And just being that one in the service, you are in the service. Listen, like you said, just because you ain't clapping your hands, you you so you listen. You in the service, but you on another level in the service. You're looking in the spirit, yeah. in the service. And and I recall being in a ministry, and I looked across the way. I believe you were in service that day, and I looked across the way. And I saw deception looking at me. Oh, my God. Yes, yeah, staring me down. And I looked back. I didn't blink. I looked back to say, I see you. So this skilled watchman could sometimes recognize the runner by their stride. Before seeing their face. Oh, that's good. So you know what just hit my spirit? While you're looking, the stronghold is identified. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, While you're looking. Oh, Ooh, that's how you identify the stronghold. Yes, 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 yes. And, you know, I want to say this part this real quick. Go ahead. Um, I, I have been in a place in, in, in ministry, in the service, that it was such a strong uh, um, a struggle mm -hmm. getting to the presence of God. You know, just such a struggle. The praise and worship is struggling. Um, the musicians are struggling. And in a, in a situation like that, I would begin to pray in my heavenly language. And I have literally, I have literally been lifted. Mm-hmm. To, to look down at the sanctuary. Wow. I have literally been lifted in the spirit, and I am like, How, where, where am I seeing? And I look down, and everybody is sitting, and I'm looking down. Mm -hmm. I have literally been lifted in the center of the, of the church to look down, where I was able to see everyone. I was able to look around at everyone from where I was down. And, and so this is when you're being set in the spirit. Mm -hmm. When the Holy Spirit will set you in a place where the watchman can see clearly. You know, the scripture tells you how they went to the watch power. Mm -hmm. Where the watch power is told. Yes. So that you can look down. Very glory to God. So that if you begin to pray in your heavenly language, Holy Spirit will lift you up from your seat in the spirit and allow you to look down. Oh, glory to oh God. yes. You cover more ground when you're looking from when you when you're above looking down. Cover more ground, and the only way to get to that elevation is to pray in your heavenly language and and pray and enter in and allow Holy Spirit to take you there. Amen. See, this kind of thing, this kind of talk right here sounds you know, sounds kind of crazy to some people, but I tell you that if you allow Holy Spirit to take you there, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit will take you places. You've never been, and it may even be fearful sometimes, because it was a little bit frightening to be up high, looking down, and I'm sitting in my, but I'm up, I'm over the church, seeing everyone at the same time. Amen. God. 
that that's absolutely that's that's so good and that's so rich and powerful like you said it may sound strange and and so unorthodox to many but when you know that you have been called as a watchman and some are new are, are newly being called it takes conversations like this to help us to understand and 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 the thing of the matter is when you don't have those conversations it takes you longer to accept that mantle and to walk therein so i think I thank God. I thank the guidance of the Holy Spirit for leading us within this time of discussion. And, and listen, we, like I said, uh, this has been on me for a while, but I want to say for the past month or so, I've really been studying it and having some in-depth conversations. Uh, we talked to Pastor McCoy and, uh, you know, we have more to come up. This isn't the end. Listen, we have some other people scheduled. And I do know that as time permits, uh, we're going to have Prophetess Melissa come back. Uh, you know, as she said, uh, the Holy Spirit alerts alerts the watchmen. Seasoned watchmen are often alerted by the Holy Spirit before they ever have any concrete evidence. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's for when something is not to be trusted. They recognize wolves, listen, sent to devour the flock with yeah. their improper motives. And I don't know about you, but I think I would cringe. I, I have cringe when you listen to conversations after service and you hear stuff like, you see the way we play the see, you know, and I'm going back to the musicians um, because it's the minstrel, you know, Satan was very skilled. And so when you hear those who play the instrument say, you see the way we had them dancing? Listen, I don't need you to play. Clap your hands. <laughs> yeah. Stomp your feet. I don't need you to, to, to play. Come off the instruments. Come off. Yeah. And so, listen, there is so much for us to cover. We're actually almost to the end. And there's a very... <laughs> I know. My so, listen, we're going to schedule... We have to schedule Prophetess Kelly to come back because I want us to dive into Isaiah, the uh, 21st chapter. And then we're also, listen, we, we've covered a lot uh, watching for the enemy. Like I said, this right here is not a one-time conversation. We're going to have our, our, our men and women of God coming back because it's so much to cover in this walk. And so I definitely want us to dive into in to this and I want to say under spiritual maturity let us learn to trust those who have been set listen you, when I say to be set as the watchman I ain't talking about no volunteer for somebody who want to be nosing somebody business no I'm talking about being set for the kingdom of heaven yeah, amen and I want to encourage those who have, this mantle has been placed on you. Listen, you're not crazy. You're not. You're not. God is, 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 is showing you things. He is revealing things to you by the Holy Spirit. So listen, this is not the end. There is going to be a part two with Prophetess Melissa Kelly because there's a whole area of the word we didn't even get to today. So listen, uh, we are going to share some updates with you in the coming weeks for Purpose to Pray. Uh, I just want this woman of God to, when we come back for her part two, I just really need to let her dive into that area of scripture and, and, and give her that time so she can spread her wings. But you know that we love you. We support you. You are one of our partners in prayer. And we're praying for each and every one of you. Stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way. Have a blessed day, everyone. Amen.